Hello everybody. So today we're going to be tackling an auto cycle question. Um, it's sort of similar to the diesel cycle question I did before. Air in an auto cycle begins the compression process at 100 kilopascals and 300 degrees Kelvin. Has a compression ratio of 9 and the combustion process produces 500 kilojoules per kilogram of heat. That can be a little bit confusing, but what I realized from this problem is that they were saying that the QN is 500 kilojoules per kilogram of heat. And that can be sort of counterintuitive, but just think about like, that's not the, the, the heat that you're expelling, okay? It produces that heat. So that's the heat that, that the engine now takes in, okay? After the combustion, okay? Um, answer the following questions about the cycle using cold air standard assumptions. One, what are the temperatures at the end of the compression process and beginning and end of the expansion process? What is the network produced by this cycle? What, is cycle? what is the cycle thermal efficiency and how much entropy is produced during the compression process and expansion process? Okay, cool. Now, um, they asked for the, the temperature at the end of the compression process. That's T2. I can go ahead and immediately solve for that. T2 is simply using those isentropic um, equations that we have, right? We can go ahead and say that T2 is equal to T1 times V1 over V2, no, yes, to the K minus one. Now, something I wanna point out, um, the compression ratio being nine is just V1 over V2. So this is just nine. So T2 is actually equal to 300 times nine to the 1.4 minus one. And that gives me that T2 is equal to 722.47 Kelvin. And I got this 1.4, it's, it's just the K for air. That can be gotten from the book, okay? So this T2 is 722.47. Kelvin, okay? Cool, they wanna know T3 and T4 also. Now, um, they've told me that, v, that Q out is equal to 500. So let's say I, I look at this as a closed, um, sorry, as a, yes, as a closed system, because this whole thing is a closed system, right? I can say that Q out I know is for, I'm sorry, this is Q in. This is actually Q in. Q in, it, it, it occurs from points two to three. Constant volume, heat addition, right? So I can say that from two to three for here, Q minus W equals delta U. Because there's no work done at that point in time, right? Constant volume uh, for a closed system, PDV, right? No work done, Q equals delta U. Q, this is Q net, right? Q in minus Q out. We have no Q out here, right? So Q in is equal to delta U, which is C V T3 minus T2. I know it's T3 minus T2 because T3 is higher than T2 and we want a positive number. So this gives me 500 is equal to 0 0.718. That's the CV for air. You can find that in your tables. Um, times T3 minus T2. I don't know my T3, but I do know my T2. 722.47, okay? That gives me, once I solve for T3, that T3 is equal to 1,418.84, 1, 0.85 actually. 1,418.85 Kelvin, okay? And because of that, that allows me to solve for T4, right? Using those same um, equations. T4 is gonna be equal to T3 times V3 over V4. But what I wanna point out here is that V1 over V2 is V4 over V3 because V1 is equal to V4 and V2 is equal to V3. 
So V1 over V2 is equal to V4 over V3. But they asked for V3 over V4 to the K minus 1. That's actually 1 over R, okay? And, and try not to get, like, don't get that confused, okay? This is actually 1 over R. So T3 is equal to 1418.85 times 1 over 9 to the 1.4 minus 1. T4 equals that. T4 equals... Five hundred and eighty nine point one seven Kelvin. I want to do them, I want to be consistent with my colors. Okay, cool. So now they asked us for two T2, T3, and T4. Those are the temperatures at the end of the compression process and the beginning and the end of the expansion process, right? Compression process. Expansion process, okay? Now, what is the net work produced by this cycle? I have my Q in, now I need my Q out, and I need, um, I just need my Q in and my Q out, right? That will give me the net work. And why would that give me the net work? Let's say I look at this whole thing from one to four, right? Going all the way around, right? Remember, I've said that work and heat are path dependent. That means that I can't get, we can't have heat at a point in time. Like, I can't have heat at point one, heat at point two, but I can have specific volume, I mean, specific uh, internal energy at point one, at point two. So that being said, to get the difference, right, I just subtract the two. U2, delta U from point one to point two is simply U2 minus U1, right? But I can't say Q2 minus Q1, that, Work and heat are sort of processes, right? So that being said, if I if I went like this, right? Let's say this is a PV diagram, right? The amount of work done will be different than if I went like this. That's just basically what I'm trying to say. And the same thing with heat and everything. So if I look at this whole thing as a closed system, right? And I say for one, two, three, and four, right? So I'll just I'll just write it like. 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 1, right? Just implying that we went and we started back at the same position. Will there be any change in U? Remember how I said my delta U is just my U final minus U initial. If my U final and my U initial are the same, delta U is 0. So Q minus W equals delta U, but this whole thing goes to 0. That means that for this, I can say that Q, because this is Q net, is equal to W, which is W net. So that's just what I'm trying to point out. So they asked for the for the net work. It's just my my uh, net heat also. That's just what I'm trying to point out. Okay. So I've been given my Q in. Now I just have to find my Q out. When does Q out occur? Q out occurs from point four to point one. So I have to observe point four to point one. Let's just look at it as a closed system. Q minus W equals delta U. No work being done, right? Yes, no work being done. This is actually Q in minus Q out equals delta U, right? This Q in is zero, right? Because this is Q net, right? Q net is given by Q in minus Q out. So I have negative Q out is given by, this is from 4 to 1, so it's given by CV T, hmm, T1 minus T4, yes, this makes sense, and then we always want to end up with a positive number, right? So if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get the Q out is equal to CV times T4 minus T1, right? And that makes sense because T4 is higher than T1. So this difference will be positive, whereas this difference would have been negative, but because to get my positive Q out, I would have had to multiply that negative number times negative one, right? So 
CV is 0 0.718. I have my T4, which is 589.17. Um, T3, which is 300. So my Q out is equal to Two oh seven point six two point six two, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. So my net heat, which is equal to my net work, which is what they asked for, is simply Q in minus Q out, and this should be higher than this, right? Because I want a positive number. That's a good way to check yourself. Check yourself before you write yourself. You need to check yourself. Okay. Um, 207.62. That being said, 500 minus answer. My net work is 292.3.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And they want net work um, because they didn't give us like like <clears throat> mass or anything. This is just like net specific work. So this is this is a perfectly good answer, okay? Then they said, what is the cycle thermal efficiency? That's just 1 minus Q out over Q in. So eta is equal to 1 minus <clears throat> Q out over Q in. That's just 1 minus Q out, which is... 292.38 all over, so I'm being sort of sloppy with the way I'm writing, all over 500, eta is equal to 0 0.4, 0 0.4152. Now they asked um, how much entropy is produced during the compression process and expansion process. I don't even need to write anything for that. Isentropic means no change in entropy, right? So there is no entropy produced for the expansion process nor the compression process because those are isentropic processes, right? Um, anytime you hear isentropic, just know that delta S equals zero. We know that. Um, that was just sort of a freebie that they were throwing us. So that's really all you need to answer that uh, problem. Um, yeah. Um, if anything was unclear, please feel free to ask comments in the com I mean, to ask questions in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Tell their friends to subscribe, and let's keep learning thermal. Okay. Thank you.